Welcome, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa salam. This is Edward Ahmed Mitchell welcoming you to today's segment on Muslim Network TV. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a historic day. Uh, many of you may have heard the International Court of Justice issued its ruling, uh, initial ruling in response to South Africa's filing of a charge of genocide against the Israeli government. What did the ICJ rule? What does it mean for the Palestinian people facing death and destruction in Gaza? What does it mean for the Israeli government? What does it mean for the American government and the support we're providing to the Netanyahu government? To answer some of these questions, I want to bring on our special guest, Professor Francis Boyle. He is an expert in this very subject. He's a professor of international law at the University of Illinois College of Law. Uh, Mr. Boyle's books include The Bosnian People Charge Genocide, published back in 1996, Palestine, Palestinians, and International Law, published in 2009, and World Politics, Human Rights, and International Law, published in 2021. He was recently featured on the piece titled On Israel, Lawyer Who Applied Genocide Convention for Bosnia, Recommends It Now for Palestinians. Professor Boyle brings a lifetime of experience uh, with the issue of genocide, and we're happy to have his expertise here today. Professor Boyle, thank you for joining us. How are you doing? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for having me on. Wa alaikum assalam. Happy to have you. So uh, let's just start with the basics. You know, from your perspective, what did the ICJ rule today? Because we're hearing, you know, the South African response, the Israeli government's response. We're hearing um, some uh, supporters of Palestinian human rights happy about it. Some Palestinians very upset about it. Just give us the facts first. What 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 does the ruling issue today uh, uh, entail? First, I have to explain, I was the uh, first person ever uh, to win an order from the International Court of Justice on the basis of the Genocide Convention that was massive and overwhelming for the Republic of Bosnia-Herzegovina against Yugoslavia to cease and desist from committing all acts of genocide. And then I won a second world court order for the Bosnians against the Yugos, massive and overwhelming. Uh, this was the first time ever that any lawyer had won two world court orders in one case since the world court was founded in 1921. And then I won a third order for the Bosnians. Uh, this was uh, from the uh, president of the court uh, acting in the name of the court that was also binding. So I won three orders in uh, six months uh, all by myself working uh, pro bono publico. From, from that perspective, this was uh, a massive, uh, overwhelming victory for the Republic of South Africa uh, against uh, uh, Israel on behalf of the uh, Palestinians that I believe will have uh, significant consequences down the line. The content of the ruling itself, it seems they, they obviously allowed the case to proceed, um, found the, the allegations plausible. Give us a breakdown of what the major findings of the ICJ were today, from your perspective, the important ones. Well, okay, by 15 votes to two, uh, the World Court ordered Israel to uh, stop killing the Palestinians causing serious bodily, mentally harm, deliberately inflicting on them conditions of life calculated to bring about their physical destruction, whole or in part, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. I won measures just like that twice, overwhelmingly, for the uh, Bosnians, uh, just just the same, and then also fifteen to two. Uh, Israel uh, shall ensure with immediate effect that its military does not committee, commit any uh, of these acts uh, above. Well, okay, the court technically, legally could not impose a ceasefire uh, because, by that name because uh, Hamas is not a party to the litigation. But if you uh, add those two measures up, the, the court imposed a de facto ceasefire, sure. And that's an important point because we're, we're, we've heard some confusion about that. Um, and so what you're saying is that the ruling issue today, very similar to the rulings you won uh, uh, back when the Bosnians were experiencing genocide, and effectively it's telling the Israelis stop killing, uh, murdering Palestinian civilians in, in Gaza, essentially. That's correct. And then also the next measure, uh, Israel uh, must, uh, well, the most important one, uh, 
take an immediate and effective uh, measures to enable the provision of uh, urgently needed basic uh, services, humanitarian, uh, to the uh, Palestinians of Gaza. That was 16 to 1. Even the uh, Israeli judge, Ed Hawk, voted for that. Uh, I've appeared before that Israeli judge, Hawk, in uh, Israel, uh, uh, Barak, uh, with uh, a leader of the Israeli uh, peace movement that he, he ruled against at that time. Uh, so uh, I think that's that's very significant, 16 to 1, because we need a, an immediate ceasefire, uh, massive provision of uh, humanitarian relief supplies to the Palestinians in Gaza, and then uh, an exchange of hostages on both sides. That's what we need. What and by the way, at the end, the uh, you know the the court did for call for the release of the hostages too. The president did. What do you think the practical consequence of this will be, and also the legal consequences um, of it? Obviously, the court uh, cannot necessarily enforce its own ruling. So, what are the next steps? What 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 are the actual legal and practical consequences of the rulings they've issued today? Well, under the terms of the United Nations uh, Charter, this order gets sent to the Security Council for enforcement. You know, it's just like a domestic legal proceeding. You go to a judge, you win your judgment. Uh, if the, the uh, defendant doesn't comply, the court does not uh, enforce the judgment. You go to the sheriff. Here it's the UN uh, Security Council. Regretfully, as of yesterday, I don't know what their position will be after the court order. Uh, the uh, Biden administration and the Sunak government looks like they'll veto uh, any uh, effective enforcement measure, but they might not. But if they do, then it would be turned over to the UN General Assembly for uh, enforcement by under the Uniting for Peace resolution. And the consequences for Israel could be quite serious. And what might those be, assuming they don't comply with the order? First, the uh, General Assembly could uh, uh, suspend Israel from participation in its activities, like it did to the criminal apartheid regime in the former South Africa, and like it did to uh, my adversary, the genocidal Yugoslavia. Second, the uh, General Assembly can set up an international criminal tribunal for Israel. Uh, um, I uh, started an initiative along those lines several years ago. It was supported in the um, General Assembly uh, by uh, Malaysia and Iran, many Arab and Muslim states. Uh, It was torpedoed by the uh, uh, usual sources. But I would hope now with this order, the General Assembly will revisit my proposal to set up an international criminal tribunal for Israel and start prosecuting the highest level officials of Israel, civilian and military. And you'll note today the court condemned the president of Israel, Herzog, and Gallant, the minister of defense, uh, for war crimes, crimes against humanity, uh, and outright genocide that the court found was going on today. Third, uh, the court, the General Assembly could admit Palestine as a full-fledged uh, UN member state. Uh, today, uh, Palestine is an observer state at the UN, along the line Switzerland was uh, before uh, it became a full-fledged UN member state. I did all the legal work for the Palestinians on that. Um, they tried the last time in 2012, the, the Americans uh, uh, prevented this from happening, so they uh, settled for observer state status. But now uh, with this order, I would hope the Palestinians could go for a, a full-fledged UN member state. Certainly the votes are there uh, for them. They have my advice. What, what they do is really up to them in consultation with the Republic of South Africa who won this order. It's their order. Um, and the importance of that is that no UN member state has been destroyed. Uh, some have collapsed, like my adversary, the genocidal uh, Yugoslavia. Well, good riddance to them. Uh, but uh, uh, they have never been destroyed. The Zionists want to destroy Palestine. 
and the Palestinians. Netanyahu made that clear, saying he, he was going to keep uh, uh, all of the uh, mandate for Palestine. And so if they get UN membership, that would make it very difficult for the Zionists to destroy them. I had the uh, uh, same problem with the Bosnians. Uh, the United States, the EU and its member states, uh, and uh, the United Nations itself tried to rob Bosnia of its U.S. membership, U.N. membership, so they could destroy the Bosnians. I stopped that from happening. And today, uh, Bosnia is uh, still there. It is still a uh, U.N. member state. Next, the General Assembly could recommend to its member states uh, that they adopt uh, economic sanctions against Israel. Today, you know, North Korea suffers under draconian uh, economic sanctions. I don't support that anymore under these circumstances. But all those sanctions go back to a uh, UN General Assembly uh, resolution adopted by, under the Uniting for Peace resolution. And then finally, the UN General Assembly uh, could recommend that uh, all UN member states sever diplomatic relations with Israel. Now, the Palestinians have my advice. On, on all these points. What they do, I don't know. Uh, they will obviously consult with Republic of South Africa and come up with whatever strategy uh, they are going to pursue. Final question for you, Professor. What are the potential consequences, legally or otherwise, for the United States and other governments that continue to provide weapons to the Israeli government especially if the Israeli government does not change course in terms of the, the killings they're conducting in Gaza, the bombing of civilians and hospitals and ambulance and things. Is, is there any legal impact on the United States if we are financially, militarily supporting this behavior after today's rule? Yes. Uh, uh, South African Foreign Minister Pandor made that clear today in, in her uh press conference, although she was very diplomatic. Uh, uh, she did not accuse the United States of aiding and abetting uh, Israeli genocide against the Palestinians in violation of Article uh, 3E uh, e of the Genocide Convention that clearly criminalizes uh, complicity in genocide. So she didn't spell all that out. She, you know, she's a foreign minister. But it's clear she's uh, aware and the government of South Africa is aware of the consequences. The Palestinians uh, are aware of the consequences. Years ago, I, I uh, offered to uh, President Arafat uh, to sue uh, Israel for genocide and to sue the United States for aiding and abetting genocide uh, in violation of the Genocide Convention. So obviously, South Africa is aware. Uh, uh, the Palestinians are aware, you know, what, what happens from there. I can't say. Again, I, I give advice, but, uh, you know, what everyone decides to do is up to them. I want to make it clear. I, I don't advise, uh, the Republic of South Africa. I did do, uh, dur during the struggle against the criminal apartheid regime in South Africa, I did do, uh, pro bono work for the ANC at the, uh, request of their uh, lawyer at the time was a friend of mine uh, and was involved in the struggle against the criminal apartheid regime uh, in, in South Africa, both here in the United States and internationally. But I, I don't advise them. Understood. Professor, I want to thank you for coming on today to give us some of the context and explanation of what we're seeing today. Um, thank you for your historic service, especially in South Africa and, and Bosnia. And, you know, I think we're going to have to have you back to discuss what happens, what things look like a month from now um, and, and beyond. So thank you so much for, for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again in the future, God willing. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. And thank you all for watching this segment on this historic uh, day for international law for the Palestinian people, for the future of human rights uh, in the world. Uh, thank you for joining us. And we look forward to hopefully seeing uh, an end to this violence um, uh, very, very soon, inshallah, God willing. Thank you all so much. Assalamu alaikum. May peace be upon you.